everyone! Today in this video I'm going to answer your questions about roses. There are quite a few of you who posted your questions and today we are going to try to tackle those questions. So the first question is from Elma and Elma said I have some climbing roses that are new this year and they have super long canes shooting everywhere. Do I take those and bend onto the trellis and what about fall? How much do you cut back climbing roses? Well, there are two main stems in a climbing rose. The main cane, which rose produces the first year, and it, usually the main cane doesn't produce any roses whatsoever. It just grows tall and strong, what you have right now, those canes growing everywhere. And those canes are usually very long. And what happens next year, those canes will have lateral canes. So second type of cane would be a lateral cane. And that happens second year. If your main stem is bent horizontally, every bud will produce a shoot, a, a little stem, a lateral stem, and those stems will produce flowers for you. So what I would advise Elma to do is don't cut those stems out because these are your first year long uh, shoots which next year will produce your flowers. So what happens when you cut them you will lose all those flowers for next year. What you do right now, you have a beautiful trellis, I can see from your question, which is great because I don't know the size of your trellis, but if it's a big trellis, you have all this opportunity to stretch your rows in a fan shape, make sure that those canes can be as horizontal as possible, and then you can train your rows, tie all those canes, as many as you can, to your trellis, and next year you will have beautiful lateral shoots coming up on every cane and you will create a beautiful display for you to enjoy in your garden. Now, it's good to know if you buy a rose, to know what type of rose you have. Uh, when any plant comes into my garden, I usually try to collect all the stickers. Sometimes I, I, you know, I throw them away or whatever, but usually it happens that I collect all the stickers from my plants and I save them. So here I have a spot, you see this little chest? And I have a little bag there, I will show you. Here is a little bag and I put all my stickers here in this bag, all my descriptions and whatever is coming with the plant. You see, there are plenty of them. Some of them didn't make it in my garden. There are pl pl plenty of failures in my garden. Uh, but I still keep them just for the reference that I had them and uh, what worked, what didn't work. So it's good to know what rows you have. If you have a climbing uh, repeat bloomer or climbing once bloomer rows. And since, uh, did you tell us in your question? No, you didn't tell us what type of climbing rose you have. Uh, what you would do with a once bloomer rose, you would trim it right after this major big bloom rose is produced, once a year. But if you have repeat climbing rows, you can trim it through the year small if you need to keep it in a nice presentable shape. And then the biggest trim would be at the beginning of spring when the rose is ready to bud out and start growing. My rose in my garden, I have a big, I have several big oldish seven eight year old climbers repeat bloomers and this year they're getting too top heavy so i am going my next video would be about trimming those roses in summer at the end of the season because i'm afraid that if they go so top heavy into winter they can get big damage the wind can just take them out and flop the trellis or the arch they're growing on the arch and i don't want that to happen so in my next video i'm going to show you how i tackle that big job but for elma she has a young baby bush so she doesn't need to do any training trimming right now on it just save those big long shoots and enjoy lateral shoots next year and those lateral shoots will produce a beautiful climbing rose for you. 
Now, my se our second question is from uh, Hai Triong. I'm not sure, please forgive me if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. And this is the question. This is a great video. Please do it weekly or monthly. My question is, what is the pros and cons of planting bare roots versus potted roses? Big question, very loaded question. I will try to explain it as best as I can. So, my vote is for bare root uh, uh, roses because bare root roses, if you're planning your garden ahead of time, you have great selection. You have everything what you want. If you're planning for next year and you're ordering this year for next year, you can order any rose you want. So that's thing number one. Second one, bare root roses are coming into your garden uh, with nothing on top, meaning there is no foliage, there are no beautiful blooms, beautiful leaves. So the plant, instead of trying to support all this foliage on top and flowers, if it's flowering in the pot, it can focus on formation of roots. And they say, I read in some blogs that the development of bare root roses is much faster and better than potted roses. Of course, when you come with a potted rose in your garden, you have an instant effect right away. And I know there are situations in our gardens where we do need that quick effect right now. But if you're not after that, and if you don't need this beautiful, lush, growing thing in your garden right away, I highly encourage people to go for bare root roses. Of course, bare root roses. You can buy them only in spring. Shipment is only in spring when spring is just beginning in your area in, and all the nurseries are telling you when they're going to ship it. They know exactly your climate. So don't worry, what is the shipping time? Do I have to choose the shipping time? No, no, no. Companies know when the weather is good for shipping in your area and they do at that time, letting you know ahead of time what is the shipping um, schedule is. Uh, if you want to buy potted roses, please keep in mind that Rose is so busy trying to support this lush growth, these beautiful leaves on top and flowers, that when you put the rose into your garden, into your soil, there are two things rose is trying to do. Trying to establish um, uh, roots in a different soil, because the potted soil is different than your garden soil, so that's extra kind of stress for a rose. And rose is trying to support the blooms and leaves on top. And when I go, sometimes at the end of summer, when I'm passing by through the nurseries and you know our big uh, box stores where they sell plants, I see all these plants blooming galore. And I know that they are blooming themselves to death, basically, because plant will go Plant actually will die to create a seed, right? Because plants are so eager to continue uh, the, gener the next generation going. So all these crab apples and all these roses are blooming away to create a seed. And because of that, their root system is really weak. They're busy to form the top display. Keep that in mind if you want to buy a potted rose. Of course, again, there are situations where we need the presence here right away. We have a wedding, we have this dead spot here, and we need to have it to create a beautiful display. You do it, you go for it, and then make sure you take care of the rose, you water it, fertilize it. And um, uh, there's one more suggestion. If you have to do it, just do yourself a favor. After you have a big wedding, after you have a big event and the show is over, do yourself a favor. Trim those uh, potted roses which are growing in your soil. Give them a break. Take those blooms away. Let rose focus on the root system instead of trying to support all those flowers. And you can bring those beautiful blooms into the house and create a nice display on, on your dinner table. Right, our next question is from Diana. Diana said, I ordered a generous gardener after watching your videos. Yay! Want to train it to grow around my northeast front porch post. What would be the best thing to use to attach it to my metal posts? Well, I'm a simple girl. I bought myself this green elastic 
and it was on sale huge sales the company was getting out of business they sold it to me 200 yards i just went for it and there are two reasons i like it first it it's flexible so if i tie something to the post it's not going to be too tight restricting the growth of the cane in case the cane tries to enlarge in size second it's green so green is good i don't like to have bright colors in my garden i like my garden to be on the calmer side and i don't want to see any artificial colors in the garden so anything black non-shiny or green in the serving equipment let's put it this way is great for me so this is what i use for my roses i make sure that uh, there is a twist between the rose and the you know metal posts because i don't want my rose to touch the metal post in winter uh, there can be rubbing going on or metal post can freeze can get very cold so just when you do it just do a tie between the rows and the post this way there is no way there would be any damage and make sure that if you decide to go with the elastic make sure that you don't do it too tight G leave a little bit of give so this is it about my elastics a question from when i love the q a video you did it very well thank you olga i have a question regarding bare root or potted rose plants i ordered 11 bare root plants from da for next spring shipment is it better to receive non-da roses meaning david austin roses in two quart or one gallon pot in fall or in spring so the first question about the bare uh, root or potted roses i answered already in my previous uh, answers now here's a question about two quart or one gallon pot and spring or fall shipment i always you know there's a question of price of course one gallon plants are going to be more expensive the shipment is going to be so costly if you can't pick it up in the nursery yourself and there's also always uh, uh, i would go for a bigger plant if i can of course if i can afford it two quart plant is kind of small for me uh, so that's what i would advise to go for the plant you can afford the biggest plant you can afford as for the fall or spring I would go for spring shipments because ro um, any plant, not just roses in your garden, any plant is ready to produce a lot of new roots in spring. And that's what you want your rose to do when you put it in your garden soil. You want the rose to fo focus on root production. And that happens the most in spring when rose is full of, full of nutrients and ready to go in our garden. Plus, if you buy potted roses from the nursery somewhere you're run, uh, riding around and you see this nursery you go in and you see a potted rose and it's fall you don't know what conditions this rose was growing as a whole summer it means that that rose is not salt so the whole year and it was baking on the sun maybe maybe not maybe it was well taken care after but maybe it was baking on the sun and it is root bound and it's suffering it's stressed and it's going into your garden well i had plants like that coming into my garden i babied them back to their beautiful healthy themselves and uh, they're doing nice very nice in my garden now but those usually those plants in fall are extra stressed and they need more care so uh, answer is it's better spring than fall in this situation as well our next question is from ali ali is asking olga i have a new question about lady of charlotte is the color of the blooms influenced by the soil and climate and other external conditions I'm asking because I thought your Lady of Charlotte shrub looked more beautiful than the images on the David Austin website. The dual coloring seems more pronounced on yours. Good question. I was greatly surprised by uh, Lady of Charlotte rose and I consider that rose the most changing in, um, in bloom's color and uh, the way blooms look through the growing season through the flowering season that's the most surprising rose in my garden so lady of shallot basically what it starts to do it's the first big flush of blooms is in strongly orange color and then it slowly transitions into this pinkish uh, dark pink um, orangey color and it fades away almost light pink so 
transition of color is great I don't use any filters on my camera when I film my garden so no adding or taking away from color in my videos that's how Lady of Charlotte behaves in my garden I don't think it has to do anything so much about the soil condition. I think it has to do about um, weather, sun and the uh, changing of seasons more than that. Uh, Great Britain is so different in, in weather than the weather in America here. Um, I think that has something to do with it. And um, I know that David Austin uh, company said that roses do flourish in America. David Austin roses do flourish in America. I wouldn't say better. There are more uh, favorable conditions, conditions in America for their roses to flourish. That's what I heard. But that's true. Lady of Charlotte is, uh, has different blooms so the growing season. And I really enjoy it. I really look forward to that pinkish uh, blooms the second pinkish color first color is very orange and it's I find it interesting but my favorite is that second deep pink color of Lady of Charlotte our next question is from Sunshine Lee hi Olga your videos are so peaceful your garden is very lovely and I love listening to your talk with that accent of yours but I do have a topic maybe for a video well, on all my roses, I've been using only organic fertilizers. I've used Rose Tone, Alaska Moor Bloom, Maxia and Alaska Fish Fertilizer and the David Austin Rose Food. I always felt the synthetic stuff like the miracle Grow was so bad, so I never used them. Recently, I've seen people who had very beautiful roses, so I messaged them to see what they used. They used miracle Grow. So I looked into it and it says the organic granular foods are not immediately ready for our plants to get nutrients. It has to go through a long process of being broken down by the worms and earth. Unlike the miracle Grow, which no longer has a harmful Monsanto ingredient in it, it gives the plants immediate nutrition. And wow, miracle Grow is so much cheaper and has awesome results. I've heard the organic stuff can't give the awesome results like the synthetic fertilizers, but I know the organics are really good for the soil and all. I am so, I'm so confused. I'd like to know what is true or not. I want to try the miracle Grow just to see the difference, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Well, it's quite a loaded question. So let me answer to the best of my abilities. Right away, I have to tell you that I am against artificial fertilizers. There would be only two reasons why I would use artificial fertilizers is when I have my roses potted or generally potted plants, because that plant depends on you totally. It can't go around and search for nutrients in the open soil. It has this confined space and you're basically responsible for its well-being. So if rose is growing in the pot, definitely I will use artificial fertilizers in combination with natural good good stuff and another time if I when I would use artificial fertilizer is when I need to come in and save a plant right away like I see the plant is growing in some extreme conditions where it's definitely nutrient suffering from lack of nutrients and it's basically dying off definitely a boost of artificial fertilizers to deliver that right into the system of the plant for it not to die but if you have a beautiful garden and everything is doing well and you want to use your, try your artificial fertilizers, let me tell you what will happen. Let me walk through the process of what's going to happen with your soil when you start putting artificial fertilizers into your plants. So you have soil, right? And here we go. You add artificial fertilizer. What it does, it's cheap, that's true. It's very quick acting. So the minute you add that fertilizer, next day you see the results. Your rose is starting to become greener and better. Produces these wonderful blooms. And you're like, wow, instant gratification. Yes, rose is doing very well. But then fertilizer goes into the system and starts taking down the structure of your soil. So it suppresses the life of all the microorganisms which are thriving, growing around the root ball of your rose. Those microorganisms, since they are slowly decreasing in number in your soil because you're using artificial fertilizers, 
and they cannot work through all the organic matter in your soil so it doesn't work it out and create a nice structure of the soil so your soil is getting compacted your soil cannot hold nutrients well your soil starts to become very drought sensitive because uh, the presence of organic matter and well composted uh, matter in soil makes soil less uh, drought stressed it holds moisture well and it holds good stuff well in the soil it doesn't leach, leach out so here we go you have artificial fertilizer your rose is blooming galore it has beautiful wonderful roses and then oops fertilizer is finished your roses start to decline quickly so what do you do you become its maintenance person you have to water it on a strict regular schedule because soil is not there to support your rose you have to fertilize it on a strict regular schedule because soil is not there to support it Mi microorganisms and worms are not there to give your plant a strong support your rose is basically starting to depend on you or your plants in the garden and then the health of the rose is uh, i wouldn't say declining but again it's more dependable on you rose is getting uh, more susceptible to diseases to all sorts of problems and here you are again buying all sorts of products to treat your rose so that's a big reason why i am against artificial fertilizers they kill the soil eventually uh, a lot of harmful stuff is being introduced to the soil and then you're basically the maintenance person to, for your plants you have to do all this stuff on a strict regular schedule and god forbid you for, for, uh, forget to feed your rose your rose is really in trouble so this is my answer to Sunshine Lee about using artificial fertilizers. I'm against them, the bottom line. Of course, artificial fertilizers are less expensive and they are quick to act. Natural fertilizers take time, at least two, three weeks to uh, be worked, uh, goes through the system of microorganisms and worms. So you basically have to plan the care of your garden ahead of time and then you will have a beautiful benefit of having a healthy soil and everything will be thriving without you constantly hovering over it in your garden. So your garden would be living its own life as it's supposed to do without you constantly interfering in its well-being to support its well-being. So this is it about the questions. Uh, that's it for today. Please do post other questions if you have and we might do such session in the future again. Happy gardening and I will see you next time.